Okay, so welcome to today's live stream on 10 steps to practical self-knowledge. So why am I talking about practical self-knowledge? Well, as you might have seen already, I'm really interested in the self-knowledge, the understandings that you can have about yourself which you can actually apply to making a difference in your life. So you can actually have an impact in how your life happens, the things that happen in your life, and um, hopefully an impact, a positive impact on the lives of others as well. So this is really, you know, when we talk about self-knowledge, I see a lot of people really looking inwards and you know it's great of course to do meditation and go deep and start experiencing yourself as well as i sort of jokingly put a shard of one consciousness having an individual experience or something like that. that's all great to know however what you know what i really like working with and um what i think i've been really able to support a lot of people with is the self-knowledge and self-awareness that they've been able to transform into uh, changes in their lives. Hi Jenny, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it is really sunny here. Um, so I'm squinting, I might start crying in the sun, but I wanted to be in the sun and uh, <laughs> here I am. Uh, so, that, and again, indeed, that's part of my part of my story which I'll come on to in a bit so I'm seeing some really big problems um, and I see these very uh, common to the people that I work with some commonality in what comes up for the sort of people who come and work to me and with me and that seems to be you know whether they're working on health relationships money whatever in their life um, anxiety depression a lot of people are feeling disconnected in life these days. They might feel isolated, uh, trapped, and so busy in their life, so busy that they're not having any time to actually reflect on who they are. And it's leading to a lot of dissatisfaction in life. Um, it boils down to domestication, really. You know, we are the most domesticated animals in the world. And we don't necessarily see ourselves as that, but we are, you know, although it, and also it has had a lot of benefits in our lives. So I don't want to say that all of civilization is a bad thing, of course, because, you know, we've got um, amazing technologies, we've got many, you know, we've got many valuable things, um, convenience, um, things that are really, really do help us in life. But what we do have is a we've got a problem with being disconnected from the nature of which we are part. So hang on, someone just wants a link. Uh, just one second. I'm just going to add the information in. So just done that. Uh, coming back okay yeah so we're part of nature with we are seeming to be disconnected from it and this is causing us to yeah because we've just got such busy lives the trappings and way that we live in modern society the conditioning that we're under is it's almost like a spell that's keeping us stuck from actually actualizing the lives that we really desire. So, you know, I guess like like most people, I was under this spell, and I'm not saying I'm out of this spell completely because this conditioning runs very deep, but I was in a in a life where I felt very dissatisfied with many things. Um, I was I was working very hard in a company which I was a co-creator of. I'd unconsciously co-created a prison for myself. This was about 11, 12 years ago that this happened and it was the end of my career 
in financial services where I'd been very successful in a career which I basically felt really disconnected from, felt really unhappy. It was always questioning, is this all there is to life? Beating myself up about not and my belief that I had, which I found once I started using EFT, was that I wasn't success, wasn't clever enough to be able to actually do something I loved and make a living from it. And finding EFT was really the key to get me out of doing this thing that I just didn't have any connection to and actually a journey of self-knowledge, um, you know, often finding more questions than answers, but they were the right questions to move me towards a life that was more in line with who I am and, you know, what I envisioned. Always thought of myself when I was young, growing up, that I was, you know, really into freedom, really into ex excitement, not being part of the mainstream, whatever. But then I found myself, it doesn't get any more mainstream than working in the UK, highly regulated financial services industry. I mean, the company I worked for was even called Standard Life. So I was literally living the standard life. And that the joke of that, the cosmic joke was not lost on me when I thought about it. I was like, this is this is too weird. Um, and I was, you know, I actually had some good times in that company. I have to say it was very successful there, but it was, there was just gnawing away. My whole heart was going, this is not right. This is not for you. So I, anyway, through EFT, I was able to extract myself from those, from that industry at first through working on my own beliefs and then using that knowledge to, um, stay calm and keep things grounded in some very some pretty tense negotiations between all of us who are in the company and actually leave um, with a good uh, package a good deal for everyone um, who was in the company um, so two of us were able to leave with good you know with with a good um, settlement and I used it to set up my um, EFT and um, now meta health practice and that was really very valuable to me so yeah and through that I've really been exploring with probably about a thousand people I've worked with now um, in individually and in groups um, of what it is that people what the process is to go through to actually be able to practically make a difference in your life with um self-knowledge and this has sort of evolved over the last seven eight years that i've been doing this stuff and i've been able now to break it down into 10 steps that i think are really valuable to have if you want to um transform your life in a sustainable ongoing not massive disruption to the force but you know things that there's these the small ongoing steps which sometimes suddenly appear to be a massive thing you know there's a saying oh he's an overnight success but it took 10 years you know we we said out a lot of people who are an overnight success it was 10 years in the waiting basically it doesn't have to be 10 years necessarily things can happen a lot more quickly than that but yeah these are the the 10 steps that i think people need to go through they don't have to be exactly in this order, but these are 10 things that I really believe are incredibly valuable for anyone who wants to really know themselves and, um, yeah, start transforming um, their life. So uh, Jenny's saying, I can really resonate to be disconnected and isolated. It is the, it's, it has health implications. It implicates on so much in your life because it's not natural for us to be as disconnected as we are now. We are we evolved as tribal beings and being disconnected would have been deadly. It's not deadly anymore generally because of the, because we've got um, convenience and the, and TVs and things like that, but it can lead to this real boredom and it can lead to health, all, all manner of health things, which I won't go into this because I've done that in previous lives. And I want to talk about these 10 steps that I think um, are really important. And these are forward looking things, most of them, which is great. So as well as once you've cleared stuff, which is part of this, then you're looking to creating this amazing future, which begins inside. So the first step 
Number one, by the way, EFT and tapping help with every one of these steps. I'll talk about some of that as we go through, but there are, there are things that you can do with tapping to um, resolve, to, to improve any of these steps. So the first one is really getting in alignment with yourself. And that's a very big word to say, but it is what I mean by that, how I do that is I explore values. And values is doesn't sound nearly as exciting as goals and objectives and all these things which you know most people look at. But values, I think, is the number one step. And I think people make goals for their life without understanding their values, which causes them a lot of pain. Because basically, if you make if you make objectives for your life, intentions for your life, without actually understanding your values then you are not going to be making the right goals. You'll be made, basing your goals probably on other people's, um, other people's suggestions, what society says you should have in your life, um, the media, all of these different things. But when you know your values, what really makes you tick, what you're in alignment with, then that's a great place to start. So values are what you are moving towards. If, if you know what your values are um, and then you can see a path towards them. Values are like the utopia for you, your personal vision of perfect happiness if your life was entirely full of whatever those values are. Now my top five are freedom, love, fun, adventure, making a difference. And I, they sometimes change a little bit because values do change, but freedom, fun, love, adventure, making a difference, very consistent in the top five. And it means once you know this stuff, you can test what you're doing in your life against your values. And if it doesn't resonate, then you can um, you can change. You, so it makes this is the first step of it starting to be able to make better decisions. Um, you can uh, now sometimes values clash. Just as an example of that. Uh, freedom and security so those people some people want freedom and security they could be number one and number two for people and if they clash then you have to work that out because one of them might get in the way of the other one um other ones might other ones could be um that, that clash could be health and opulence for example some people might find that they want to be healthy but they also enjoy eating huge banquets and things like that so they might find that they are they've got um a clash there and there's you know there's obviously millions of ways because there's so many values that values can clash but eft is a great way to start resolving that and it's something i do with people and often they get really exciting results from that so first one is the values now as i said values are the dream of what you're moving towards you're not always living a hundred percent in your values so the next step is um starting to create habits that start moving you towards those values so if i was living towards those values what habits would take me there and coming out of unconscious habits we've all got unconscious habits which can be very counterproductive they're often they often feel negative we do the same automated things every day our subconscious mind keeping us safe in an uncomfortable comfort zone and when you create these virtuous habits, as I call them, um, then you start acting in a way that moves you towards the values. So that's very powerful. And this is really the way that you show up in the world. Your, the, your habits, the subconscious, and as they start out of conscious and then they become subconscious, this is actually who you are in the world. So from an outsider's perspective, and even as a practical day-to-day -day level of how you affect the world, your habits are you. That's quite um, surprising for a lot of people, but their habits really are you. So Jenny said an uncomfortable comfort zone. Well, that's the case for many people. Just, you know, think, you know, you've got this old favorite sofa that's your comfort zone, but gradually the springs start coming through. You have to shift around a bit to start feeling, feeling comfortable. And uh, yeah, so um, uncomfortable comfort zones are when your subconscious mind is, um, is keeping you in a zone where you're feeling safe 
but that's it there's no happiness you're not fulfilling anything because your subconscious mind actually doesn't care if you are um doesn't your subconscious mind doesn't care if you are happy it only wants to keep you safe it's a survival mechanism right so yeah values virtuous habits to get you there from there you can create a vision now i know everyone talks about creating a vision creating a vision from your values is very different when you create a vision which has your values and your virtuous habits in mind you get a real vision from your life and once you've got that you can start using that and again i do that with um using tapping and a future guided meditation into the future um called matrix future imprinting where you can actually start moving towards a future that you desire and it becomes very real you pull all of the energy in and then you can use tapping to clear any of the um any of the, the limitations of getting you towards that future and uh, you know for example there's my process the power of negative thinking which some of you might have seen transforming your negative thoughts into positive actions um, I did a webinar on it the other day which um, a lot of people liked and that's still available replay if you haven't seen that um, and you can um, yeah you can get these you, you you once you've got a vision it can start moving you forwards so then the next step from that is to understand if that's my vision and the vision you don't know when it's happening let's say you see yourself I don't know, speaking to a big room full of people. This is one from mine a few years ago, speaking to a room full of people about the stuff that I love doing. And I, that has now come true. Um, and I also had one about living in a hot, tropical place um, and having two kids. And that's, well, not a tropical place, but it's certainly hot. It's semi-tropical. And that came, but I didn't know when it was going to happen. But when you've got these visions... And you remember to look at them, you can start using them to make objectives for your life. And uh, so you, these are, I don't really, you know, I'm not a big fan of the word goals. It's got a corporate hangover for me, like it has for many people, very target based. But the difference with these is you start making objectives again for, well, you, you can, you can probably start them with an outcome that you want. So, like a, you know, a specific thing you want in your life, but then turning them into the behavior that will get them there which could even be the habits that you've created is very powerful so you have these behavior based objectives as well as the actual i want this thing to happen and then the next step step five is start understanding what the actions are to get there so you start putting the actions in place these inspired actions which you know are right for you because they fit in with your values they fit in with your virtuous habits you'll they'll get you towards your vision and they feel good when you're checking them against your these outcomes that you want when I, I generally start with yeah people can have between one and three outcomes not you can't be working on too many at once but some people will only work best with a single focus. Other people can work towards three things in different areas. So they might have a, a career or um, a career objective, a, um, a health objective and a relationship objective. They can be working towards those sorts of things in parallel, for example. And, you know, you can really break this down in, well, into the steps that can happen in a, in a few weeks to really move you towards those things or even complete them. Often they can be completed in that time. And you know, it's the, the reason this is so good. Now it's great to have these things happen in your life, but the reason it's really so good for your self knowledge is when you start trying to take these actions, which you obviously you haven't done them before, otherwise you would have all this stuff. Then it brings all of your own old stuff up. So if you've got, um limiting beliefs this is when they start piling up so you start seeing all your limiting beliefs all your fears come to surface and of course that's when tapping eft is super strong uh great you know individually or in a group um absolutely amazing because people often are resonating with what you were going through or you're resonating with what other people are going through as you tap so you get all the amazing powers of borrowing benefits 
um, really supporting you through that. So yeah, so those are um, the first five stages. Uh, the sixth stage um, is one that then continues. Um, and all of these, by the way, you can continue for life. You can keep coming back and rolling through these stages, checking yourself at them. Uh, but the sixth one is having a, um, is building a quick, easy, simple review process for you. Again, you know, you don't want this to feel too corporate or heavy or like a chore you've got to do. So it could just be something super simple so you can make sure that you're on the right track with your habits. Um, you know, one of them might be, am I, do, for example, am I doing my appreciation diary once a day, if, if that's something you decided. Um, these sorts of all changing your inner state. Um, so, yeah, make sure you're on track with your habits, checking where you are with your outcomes, checking where you are with your behaviours and your actions, moving you towards the, these outcomes. So stage six is actually having this process, and it can be weekly. You know, it's not a big, it doesn't have to be a big deal at all. It can be five or ten minutes. Um, and then if you're not, you know, this is the best way to get yourself back on track. So that's the first, that's sort of the first six stages. That's the foundational bit. But now here's where it gets really interesting. This is where, as uh, I mentioned before, when you start taking these actions, when you start moving towards the uh, life that you want, or when you um, when you take the actions and they don't quite work out as you want, it throws all of your old stuff up, all of your old limiting beliefs, your I'm not good enough, your emotional blocks, everything comes up. You start procrastinating, and that's when you can really start digging in to the beliefs. And so you know, some people look at beliefs at the start, but I find when you when you start taking action like this. Um, and you will naturally start looking at beliefs as you are doing that anyway. But then once you've started trying to make progress and change your external reality, these beliefs really come into force. And you might find that now is a great time to look at the beliefs. And I've got three stages that I look at in beliefs. Um, you can lump all of these together, but I like to break them down into the I am beliefs. So these are the ones that really define you. I am not good enough. I am, yeah, could, I am amazing. I am successful. These things could be very valuable to you. I, uh, but if it, if you're, if behind them, you've got beliefs. I'm not good enough. Um, things don't work out for me. Uh, I'm unlovable. All things from your past, from experiences that you've had. This is where you might really struggle. And uh, in you know and. So these I am beliefs define you and they're even deeper than the values. So once you've used, once you've seen the I am beliefs and you're starting to actually shift them, you can change your I am to, you know, I am intent. I am clever because a lot of people run. I am stupid from things that happened at school. I am not able to speak in public. I am scared. All these things, these can change. And tapping is an amazing way to do that. Very similar, but slightly different to the I am beliefs. The world is. So the world is a dangerous place. People don't like me. Um, beliefs that are, and of course, there's a crossover. Some of these are a mixture of I am and the world. Um, but this stage, you know, we're looking at things about the world that seem that they are. And of course, you see your beliefs as truth. So everything that you see, any beliefs about the world, um, it's a dangerous place, so common because, of course, we evolved in a dangerous world. Although we don't live in a dangerous world, or certainly not as dangerous as it was when we were living in prehistoric times, there is still. Um, it's, it's easy for us to get wired to view the negative things, so our nervous system is overreacting to stuff happening in life, which can, you know, can actually lead to many health conditions. Um, things. It, it can be a contributing factor in things like depression, um, fibromyalgia, ME, etc. Um, all of these, so as well as just stopping you from daring to take the action. So looking at these I am beliefs, uh, sorry, the, the world is beliefs, I think is very powerful. Now, once you've gone through that for a bit, we get onto the even more challenging layer of beliefs which is one that many people don't look at but i think it's really really important because you know we're living in a world which is um which is not perhaps optimized 
for our happiness at the moment. We, um, these are the, um, these are different in whatever country you're in, but there are some similarities. Uh, but you know, if you're in a sort of Western, um, modern place, such as, um, for example, if you live in England, uh, you're going to be experiencing um, a lot of these things, I would have thought. Um, and this is the collective conditioning. And, you know, these are the things that everyone takes as read. We're taught that this is the way it is at school. Um, but it messages from the media, this is the way it is. You can be left or right. There are there's, there's, this is the acceptable discourse within which you are allowed to have an opinion and you know I know many people do are out of this but we're all affected by it um, you have to you know that you but the law is law equals morality for example now um, a lot of people realizing that that's not that's less and less a case uh, could be religious, strong religious convictions that are very, very strong in, it might be very strong in your country or have been historically. These things, there might be some positives to it, there might be some negatives to it. But we, the whole point is, uh, it's actually a step of actually looking at your cultural and collective conditioning and seeing where you can shift from that. And then once you do that, then it opens you up to, again, becoming more individual and not having to have the things that society demands you have like you know people are looking at people's goals intentions in their life are often based around the norms of their society uh so yeah this is this is a uh, really important that yeah you look at these and do they actually work for you because if not you don't have to live that way you don't have to do the standard job uh, type thing you don't yeah you know all, all these um, got to get a job got to build up uh, money got to work 40 years all these things there's lots of other ways when you change when you challenge the beliefs of society which are holding you back your collective conditioning you can open up to many different ways of living you know um, these days very practically we have there's lots of alternative ways of living now you can you can travel the world but create it online income you can there's cryptocurrency so you don't even have to be um you don't even have to be bound anymore to the global financial system if you don't want to trust me there are ways that people are doing that it sounds pretty far out what do you think of this information so far it'd be great to get some comments hit me up with some likes some hearts some happy reacts whatever it'd be great to see those it all helps to share it around and if you know anyone who might benefit from any of this then feel free to drop the link over to them so yeah we're looking at that stage nine is the under is having a look at breaking and releasing the collective conditioning i think that's really really important i think it's a step that most people just don't look at because it is designed to be the truth we're told this is the truth but it isn't there's deeper there's you know there's, there's so much of the way that we live is founded on um well frankly on us being controlled and do we need to be controlled well i don't think we really do i think people are i think people are actually largely good and they are able to um be self-reliant in most cases okay so that's actually the first nine steps so just to go through those again it was the um it was <laughs> would you believe oh, i've got black but yeah it's values uh, virtuous habits um creating an inspired vision based on those um looking at the outcomes that you desire in your life um actions moving towards them having a review process to support you with that um looking at your i am beliefs looking at your um looking at the beliefs about the world from there looking at the conditioning that is keeping you in place even you know it's not all the collective beliefs that are just so powerful that we really very strongly believe that they are yet they don't really stand under scrutiny necessarily and then number 10 um this is something which i think was really interesting and uh, this is about really getting to trust yourself. So when you've gone through this process, 
you can start really trusting yourself. And by that, I mean that your gut feelings and your intuition are going to be getting better and better all the time. And you can test this by tuning into your subconscious mind and actually having, there are ways that you can very easily test whether a decision is right for you. Now, many people say well, there's this very much a, a meme, a personal development idea going around that you can trust your intuition all the time. And I've really thought about this and I've really looked into it and I don't think that people can trust their intuition most of the time unless they've been through a process of self-discovery and self-knowledge. And the reason is that actually what your intuition is showing you is what your subconscious mind is telling you. So if you base your decisions on gut feelings, your gut feeling could be a response to something that happened to you when you were two years old. And, where, and now whenever a situation reminds you of that, you get a gut feeling. So we get, so we see a lot of people and their gut feelings, their gut feelings and their intuition or what they believe to be their gut feelings and their intuition, which is really the, actually the, um, their response to trauma in their life in the past is actually, yeah, as Jenny said, fear gets in the way and keeps you safe. But once you've released your fear, once you've transformed your beliefs, then you can start trusting your intuition. You really can. And, um, one of the things or a tip for that that you can get from this just to start looking at that if you do look at your intuition a lot is if your intuition is confirming something to you that already is a dominant belief that you have for example about your about your political ideology if it's confirming that again or what you think about a a, a big leaf in the world then that is that is when you you need to check it out and then start exploring the beliefs start exploring the fears of what if the opposite was true using tapping or whatever process to actually um go through that and once you've really cleared any energy around what your gut feeling keeps telling you over and over again then you can you might find that your intuition starts to get better and especially if you've already cleared a lot of the belief systems that have been in place now just because a gut feeling comes up which makes something feel scary you know that can actually be a great thing um really powerful oh luke good to see you here uh, we're actually on stage 10 now just talking about um intuition and gut feeling and actually how for most people unless they've done a lot of um introspective work trusting your gut feeling can be very dangerous so yeah so so that's it um but once you are clear once you have um once you've started shifting those once you've shifted the beliefs and if you if you challenge your intuition if if your intuition is telling you over and over again the same things that that just um fit your comfort that fit you into your comfort zone then maybe your intuition is off whack and it's just pre-confirming your fears, limiting beliefs and emotional blocks from when you were younger, your collective conditioning, your societal conditioning, whatever. So those are the 10 steps. Values, virtuous habits, vision, objectives, inspired actions, looking at your beliefs, the three steps of looking at your beliefs, looking at your I am beliefs, looking at your uh, beliefs about the world looking at your collective limiting beliefs which are incredibly powerful and often just told to us as absolute truths this is the way it's always been um and then absolute and then getting to truly trust yourself so you can make great decisions for the rest of your life so any questions on that i hope that was interesting and I would just like to um, encourage you to check out my 12 week um, group EFT coaching program. Know yourself, be yourself, free yourself. The link is over there somewhere. Not sure where that will end up. Might be down here if you're watching the, um, the record afterwards. Uh, but it's, it's a life transforming. It gives you all of these tools that you can use for life, working with a group, 
Um, really excited about it. Um, the pilot group went really well. People got some really good outcomes in their life. And the great thing about it is that you get these, it's not 12 weeks and it's done. It's there for you to use at any time. You'll have these um, tools and techniques in your life forever. So yeah, that's it. Any questions? I'm just going to hang out for a minute be great to i'd love to answer any questions that you've got about anything i've said today um or anything else on that but yeah just do consider those these are different ways of you know you, we don't take the time to look at our lives really we we're so busy in our lives that we just um yeah we're stuck there and we're stuck in the doing we're not the beings that we should be Okay, right, so we're at 39, 15, 45 seconds to drop a question. Oh, Jenny, okay. Um, yeah, so cool, yeah, good good observation from Luke. Great topic, because to observe emotion is to watch with a view on internal and external narratives. Yeah, absolutely. You know, these emotions are important, but they can be misaligned because they are, you, know, you can certainly trust that they're telling you something, but what they're telling you might be something that your five-year-old self is telling you now would you trust a five-year-old to give you advice on relationships or a five-year-old to give you advice on your career or anything like that possibly but you need to explore that and see okay well it's been great um really enjoyed sharing this topic with you thanks for being here i'm gonna end it now um, yeah, check out the check out the group. Um, know yourself, be yourself, free yourself. Sam, EFT now. Over and out.